Welcome to another Soccer Down Here 1v1, and it's time to take a look at what's going on in USL Championship. We catch up with Connor Antley of the Tampa Bay Rowdies, and our first question with Connor has to do with uh, from what happened in the offseason after losing in the last game of the year to Orange County, what the mentality was like and what the guys observed about themselves, knowing expectations are always very, very high, what it was like in Tampa and for the Tampa Bay Rowdies leading into the early parts of the 2022 season. Here's our conversation. Obviously making it uh, all the way to the to the finals and uh, being able to play at home in front of our fans is is something that a lot of players, they don't get the opportunity to, to be a part of. So that was, it was huge for us. And it was also, you know, a big deal to a lot of us that we lost. Uh, and I think there was a, you know, bitter taste in a lot of our mouths coming into this year because that was, you know, it's an achievement all of us. Have, you know, that's what we work for all year. When we start preseason in February, it's something that, you know, when we sit down with the whiteboard and talk about our goals for the year, uh, that's number one. Uh, so coming into to preseason this year, um, we had a lot of a lot of the same guys back. Uh, I know that's a big point of Neil's is to always keep like a core group of, of players. But we also added a lot of really, really good pieces. You know, we had Jake Arman um, come in. We had Jake LaCava coming in, um, you know, two, two guys that, you know, have really, really, really done well for us this year. Um, and then a couple guys on loan, like Ka uh, Robert Castellanos from Nashville came in on loan. And anyways, start preseason. And, um, you know, if you know anything about Tampa, Rowdies, Tampa Bay Rowdies, you know that that Neil Collins is the standard here. Like Neil keeps the keeps the level high. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care how many goals you've scored. He doesn't care the best the best player on the day and the best player on the week will play. And that's what I think makes our team so good. I think, uh, you know, what what goes on each week in training, the competitiveness in training is the reason why we can go out on the weekends and and uh, and do what we do and be successful at it. Um, so I think to, to start the year, I think that's something that Neil always like, you know, preaches to us. It's like, look, at the end of the day, sometimes you can't control where you're playing at, the conditions of the field, but you can always control your work rate um, and your attitude. So that's something that, you know, this year, especially coming off that big loss, you know, we wanted to be um, we wanted to be a team that that wasn't just great for a year, but we wanted to be great again. We wanted to, to see maybe if we could, you know, sustain that for years and years. Neil, Neil talked to us in preseason about a, uh, a rugby team. I believe it's out of New Zealand called the All Blacks and how maybe the most dominant rugby rugby team in the history of the sport. And, and we listened to a few interviews from their players about, you know, how that team is able to consistently stay great year after year after year. You know, it just somehow seems that every, every, every year is a, is a better year for them. And we, we talked about how can we, you know, sustain that and how, how can we go from a year last year where we broke records, like we had an unbelievable season. How can we do that again and make it even better this year? Um, so that's how we started the year. And I think, I think we, you know, I think we started, um, I think we started a little slow, a, a lot slower than we thought. We had a really, really bunched together schedule. Um, and then when it finally opened up and we started playing a game a week, uh, if you look, uh, Neil showed us the other day, actually, if you look from that time to the end of the season, we had the best record in the league. Um, so I think, I think, I think there's a lot of positives to take out of this season. I mean, a third place in the East is, is, is we're, 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 we're happy with that, but it's, it's not that, you know, we're still at the same time a little bit disappointed because we know like what our standards are. We know that, you know, first place is always the goal. And, but we feel, you know, once you get into playoffs, it's a, it's a whole different game. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, obviously we'd love to be at home, but we also feel like we can beat anybody away too. So, um, you know, now now we're in the playoffs. We had round one this past weekend and m moving to round two on Saturday up in Memphis. Uh, it's going to be a tough game. But if you look back at the season, man, there's a lot of positives to take out this year. I think we, we've got an unbelievable group. I think Neil is really, really happy with our team. I think the versatility of our group is what makes us so special, being able to, you know, change formations, whether it be at halftime or even the middle of the first or second half, you know, something that, Neil sees and he's like he wants us to change to it I think we're able to do that we've got the players to do that um, which I think is a big deal so 
you know, overall great year, but it's not finished yet. You know, we've got, we've got one thing on our mind. And like I said, we don't care where we have to go to play that final game. If it happens to be in Tampa, uh, if we're, if we're blessed enough to get that, then, then great. But if not, um, you know, we've got guys that are experienced enough where we've been in that situation before now, where we felt that, that bitterness of losing and we've been there and, and uh, I don't think we'd let that happen again. How long did it take for the veterans that came in like Jake, et cetera, how long did it take for them to fully integrate <coughs> into what you and Neil were looking for as a club, those who have been here in the past and with what Neil is looking for, how long did it take for that to integrate and for everyone to get on the same page with those new faces? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, when I joined the team last year, I thought, that it was going to take, you know, a minute for me to adjust. But if you ask the guys that were added added this year as well, it's almost instant. You know, we have a we have we have several team meetings in preseason and stuff like that where we go over our our values, we go over our our non negotiables is kind of like what, what we like to call them. And and uh, Neil did something where he actually went around and he asked these guys that were new to our team, like Kyle Gregg, you know, Jake Arm and these guys, and and asked like, hey, look, when you've played against Tampa in the past. You know what? What's been said? What do you guys say when you're going to play Tampa? You know what? What are the thought? What are the what are the coaches saying? What are the thoughts in the locker room? And and these guys would go around and give their different answers, and and then they would always at the end they would say like, look, you know, I've been here for I've been here for two, three weeks, or however long they've been, and it, like we we see that now, like we can see that here. You know, we can see the the competitive mission training. We can see the the work rate from the players. We can see that you guys, you know, really have each other's back. You know, when you lose the ball, you win it back for each other. So, I think I think that that's something. You know, when you when you come to when you come to Tampa, you know, you're no longer you know you you learn very quickly. You're no longer an individual, and that you are a part of a collective group that is working for something so much bigger. You know, it's not about it's not it's not about you know. You look at Leo Fernandez, for example. He's our leading goal scorer, most assists on the team this year, and and he'll be the first one to tell you that like he would be the first one to thank everybody on the team for what his accomplishments, because he knows that he's not, he's not there without, without the rest of us. Although obviously, in my opinion, one of the most talented players in the league, but um, you learn quickly that, that this is, this is a team effort from all of us and that, that, uh, you know, we've all got to work together if we want to reach those goals. How tough is the Eastern conference in your view? I know that, you know, Tampa Bay always wants to be toward the top. You've got loose city, you've got Memphis 901. We'll get to them in just a little bit. Yeah. But when you get to the Eastern conference, I know that folks in the Western conference are kind of locked into their ideas as to how tough it is. And the folks in the East are as well, just how tough for someone who has, really hasn't paid attention to Eastern conference football in the USL championship. How tough is it? Yeah. You know, that's a, I feel like that's an ongoing question between the two conferences because, you know, there's always a conversation oh, with, you know, which, which conference is harder, the West or the East and, and blah, blah, blah. And I, I know a lot of, a lot of guys that have, you know, been able to play in both the Eastern conference and both the Western conference. Um, but for me, I mean, I think, I think the East is, I think the East is very hard. I think you've got teams like obviously Louisville who, you know, have been really, top standard in this league for however many years. And then, you know, you also, you have, you've got them and then you've got like new for, uh, expansion teams in the East, like Detroit, for example. And I don't know if you've ever been up there, but that's definitely not an easy place to play at all. One of the most, you know, one of the toughest fan bases we played in front of all year, um, you know, the playing on a turf field in the middle of middle of Detroit up there. And it's just, I mean, you know, I, I, I've never been to like lower lower league stadiums over in England, but our coaches have and played there and they said this is exactly what it's like in the lower divisions over in over in England. Like this is this is, you know, this is this is good, good, like good environment, really good environment to play in. But I think you've also got teams like Loudon. You got teams like Atlanta United that man, they you can't take any game off. You can't take any game easy because these these teams will sneak one past you every time. We talk about this all the time in Tampa. How every game we play, it doesn't matter if it's against Louisville or if it's against Loudon or Atlanta. Like you're going to get everyone's best game. We you know at Tampa we kind of have that target on our back, especially having won the Eastern Conference the past two years. That you know everyone wants to play their best game against us you know players want to play their best game against Tampa and so you know for us you know we we uh we walk into these games and when we prepare for these matches and 
we can't take it off. Like you can't, because if you do, you get taken advantage of. And at the in the East, you can't drop points. You drop points and you find yourself in third place like we are now. I mean, very close to, to second, one point behind Memphis. But, you know, for me, when I saw that we were third place, you know, one point behind Memphis, I went back and I just looked at these games, you know, where we, where we lost points, where we shouldn't have. And it, one game that comes to mind is when we played Red Bulls away. And, you know, we, you know, a team that, you know, a lot of respect to Red Bulls, you know, they've got a game plan and they, you know, they play it, you know, the, to the best of their ability. But definitely a game that I think we should be coming away with three points with and, and we get a tie there. Uh, so and, and, and then several, several games at home. I mean, Al Lang, in my opinion, is one of the toughest places to play in the whole whole league, not just the East. And, you know, we had some teams come in and, and beat us there, tie us at home. And, and that just doesn't happen. That's unacceptable for us. So. For me, I think the East is really tough all the way up and down. Like I said, you can't you can't take any games for granted. You mentioned the first round of the playoffs against not uh, a Miami FC, but the Miami FC. Just just ask right. the folks down there. Just ask the folks down there, Ricardo <laughs> Silva. Yeah. Now that you've had a couple of days to kind of sit back and just let it kind of just kind of let it germinate a little bit, whether you've gone back and watched yourself or just just kind of let it be. What are some of your 30,000 foot takeaways from that first round match against the Miami FC? Yeah. Um, so Miami, Miami is a team that's always tough to play against, you know, under, under a new head coach this year and Anthony Pulis, um, a lot of respect for him. He, he always comes in with a, with a, with a solid game plan. Um, I think this game, I think, you know, when I look back and I think about our, our training leading up to that week, um, I think we were ready. You know, we were – we knew that Miami was not going to come into our stadium and, and, they, were, and they were not going to get a result against us. Um, we also knew that they were very confident as well. You know, I think they had the best road record in the league this year. Um, so, you know, they didn't, they didn't care where they were going to go play. They wanted to go get a result. Um, but looking back – and, you know, I've gone back and I've watched the game and, you know, I've, I've watched my own individual clips um, – and before the game, I had said something. I said something to the team um, when we were when we were about to break our huddle and, and go to our positions on the field. And I just said, "Look, I said games like tonight. You know, it's not always about who who the best player is on the field, who the best team is, but it's about you know who's going to work the hardest, who's gonna who's going to want it more. Because sometimes, like that's what playoffs is all about. And I think on Saturday, I think we just wanted it more. I think uh, you know, obviously, playing at home is a is a what I found last year." is that playing at home is a big deal in the playoffs. I think a huge deal. And, and so being at home against a team like Miami, who are going to come in be really solid defensively. Um, you know, we were going to be out, we were going to have to be on our game to break them down because they had come to our home stadium earlier in the year and they beat us one zero. So we knew they were going to come in a similar game plan and, and uh, we needed to be sharp and execute. And, you know, luckily, you know, we got guys like Nikki Law on our team who can hit some hit some unbelievable shots and, <laughs> and score some nasty goals. So, no, a great, great win for us looking back. I mean, Seba's starting to heat up as well. That's someone who, who we've missed, you know, this season just, you know, with, with his goal scoring, you know, tendencies and his ability. Um, so right now I think I think we're a tough team to play against right now. And, and looking back at that game, I think in the first half it was – it was pretty, you know, a little back and forth, pretty even. Um, we made some tweaks at halftime. We we changed our formation a little bit. And I think we came out in the second half and we played, you know, we played some of the best football we played all year. Um, I think Neil was really proud of us after the game, you know. And this is kind of something I touched on earlier is I think that our ability to, um, you know, adapt and change change formations and, and still be able to be effective is something that makes us so dangerous uh, to play against is because, you know, we may be in a one one formation in the first half and then change to another in the second half and be just as fluid. That's something that Neil's really tried to implement in the group this year. Um, so really proud of our team. I thought it was a great performance in the second half. And obviously, you know, we were really excited to get the get the win and then, you know, move on. And we didn't honestly we didn't care if we were gonna play at home uh to whoever or away. Uh like I said, playoffs is different. So, you know, we'll be ready for Memphis. Connor Antling, Tampa Bay Rowdy's hanging out with us for another couple of minutes as we re- as we preview the Round of four, the Eastern Conference semis in USL Championship on a soccer down here, 1v1. All right, so let's go ahead and, and program Memphis 901 into the equation here. Philip Goodrum chasing after Golden Boot. 
Uh, it's, you know, folks in Atlanta know that it, it is almost like Atlanta United to West because you've got Philip Goodrum, Chris Allen, uh, Luis Fernando, Laurent Kissiadu, but Memphis 901 traditionally very, very tough. And I know that you guys aren't going to back down from any kind of a challenge, but when you look at uh, Memphis 901, what has study hall been like? Yeah. So Memphis, I think, has been a team all year that a lot of teams have kind of looked over. I think that they've been underrated. And I know it's crazy to say that with the record that they had and how many points that they've got and how effective they've been. But I still feel like teams maybe look past them and, and think of them as the Memphis as old, which they are not. I think Ben Perriman's done a unbelievable job there with his group. Um, you know, they've got they've got they've got players there that are hungry. They got players there that maybe were overlooked by, by bigger clubs and, you know, they're, they're there trying to make a statement uh, and they definitely have done so this year. Um, I respect the mess out of this team. I think that, I think that they're, they're very talented, very good group. Um, they're dangerous. I mean, they got guys like Phil Goodrum you mentioned. I don't know. I don't remember how many goals he's got this year, but 7,006. The, the guys are, the guy's a poacher. He, he wants to score goals. He's competitive. He's going to, He's going to work for it. Um, you know, Aaron Malloy in the midfield for them, very talented uh, midfielder, uh, really, really talented player, kind of pulls the strengths for them. Um, you know, Luis, Luis Fernando, who was with us last year, obviously, you know, we didn't, we didn't get to, to see him play as much as we would like to, but boy, have we seen him this year. And, you know, if he plays on Saturday, we, we know he's going to be up for it. Uh, so they, they've got a lot of talented players. And they're not a team that needs to be overlooked at all. Um, you know, being able for them to play at home, um, you know, they're they're going to have a good crowd and they're going to be they're going to be up for it. It's up for it's. I think it's up to us to to not just match their energy, match their intensity, but to go beyond that. And I think you know, I think we've got the team to do that. I think with the experience we've got in this group, um, you know, where we've kind of been in this situation before, I think this might give us the edge a little bit compared to maybe a few of these Memphis players who maybe haven't haven't made it this far in the playoffs. Um, so I think it's going to be a great game Saturday night. And I'll tell you one thing, this, we are excited to play. We're, we're ready to get back out there. We're leaving uh, a day earlier than we normally do. We're leaving tomorrow uh, to get up there and just get adjusted. So uh, we're excited and we're ready and it's going to be a great game. So then my last question for you kind of circles back to the all blacks discussion that we were having just a little bit ago. One of those, one of the things that the all blacks like to do is lay down that early marker of intimidation when they go out there and, and they do the haka and try to absolutely intimidate the ever loving daylights out of the opposition out of, out of absolute zero the second they hit, especially at a home match, it is the haka and they try to sit there and they look in the, the eyes of the opponent and they see who's going to flinch mm. when it comes to Tampa Bay going out there and getting ready for, the, the the opening kick. I I, as long, I know that Neil probably hasn't planned a haka for AutoZone after they smashed the guitar, <laughs> but I think that it, it's one of those ideas where you can, as a player, sense what's in the eyes of someone else immediately yeah. when you're right out there. And I think that having the the All Blacks as that knowledge base and and that that notion of take what they can do through intimidation early and yeah. success through a match and carry it through. Are you seeing that same kind of thing kind of permeating through Tampa Bay where it's sense where there's a weakness, uh, impose your will early, intimidate, and then garner success? Look, I think so. And also, I wouldn't be surprised if Neil had a few of us line up at half, half field and maybe get a dance going or something. But <laughs> no, uh, no, I completely, I completely agree. I think, you know, when that whistle blows, um, and it comes to game time, I think you're going to see guys that are tuned in, ready to go. You know, Neil and the staff, they make sure that there's no stone unturned when it comes to scouting their opponent, especially when we get to playoffs. Uh, I know we will be ready. Uh, you know, I hope Memphis is ready because, uh, you know, like I said, I think with this experienced group of guys we got, um, you know, we're able to to maybe look past situations that, that may not go our way. You know, if we lose the ball, we win it back. You know, I think, you know, if things even let's just say, even if even if things do go wrong, I think we've got the type of group to to come back from that easy. So uh, 
moving move into Saturday, like I said, I think it's going to be exciting, and and you know we're going to go out there and we're going to do our business. Connor Antley, Tampa Bay Rowdies, Eastern Conference semifinals, getting ready for a road trip to Memphis, nine and one on AutoZone Park, dodging smashed guitars on top of amps. It's going to be a fun environment. Connor, as always, great to catch up with you here at SDH for a one v one. Be safe, do well, and we'll be keeping an eye on things. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it.